realized my mic was not on. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for the reminder. Uh, so thank you everyone for being here today. It's the th day 11 of the 30 day profit challenge and uh, really excited to be here today. You know, it's a sunny day here in Calgary and the sun's shining. It's feeling warm, feeling energy. So hopefully you're feeling it through the, through the video camera here today. And so today we're going to talk a bit about the payment processing fees that come along in your e-commerce business. And it's one of those costs of doing business that's just kind of a given that, uh, you know, people do expect most of the time to pay for a credit card nowadays or PayPal or some other form of, of card payment. So we're going to talk a bit about today about how you calculate your payment processing fees. So without further ado, let's dive into it. All right, so here we are, it's day 11 of the 30 day profit challenge. And again, we're gonna talk a bit about payment processing fees today. So to remind yourself of where we've been at, so we're in the order margin tree these last couple of days. And when we're talking about the payment processing fees in the order margin tree, there's really kind of two other key elements that we need to be mindful of. We've got your gross revenue that is there from calculating a percentage fee or the percentage rate. And then also you've got your orders to take into account, which is going to be using the transaction rate of a payment processing fee. So you add these two together to get to your payment processing. And so we're going to take a look about that in a little bit more detail. So typically when you think about your payment processing fees, you've got sort of your gross sales revenue and your orders. Now this gross sales revenue you keep in mind is a little bit of a different number than what we've been using in the past. We've been using sort of that million dollars of product sales revenue but this also includes things like your shipping costs. It also includes things like your taxes that we looked at in that sort of order example. And so the reason why that's a little bit higher is because the credit card companies are actually charging you for what you're collecting from the customer, not necessarily what's actually going straight into your pocket. So in this scenario, we're gonna use the gross sales revenue as well as still your 4,000 orders. And then there's two different rates or two different fees that make up your payment processing fees. You've got your payment percentage rate, which is usually typically 2.9% as a lot of people talk about about. You can obviously get that down a little bit further and we'll talk a little bit more in this lesson of how that impacts the bottom line. But then you've also got typically a payment transaction rate and that's typically charged on a per order basis. So if you think about it, it's usually 30 cents, sometimes a little higher, sometimes a little bit lower, but it's usually around that 30 cent mark regardless of what you're payment percentage rate is. And so really you have to add those two together to get to your payment processing fees. Now let's take a little bit further into the math. Let's take a look at how this calculates out. So if we start on the one side of the equation, we look at our percentage fees, gross sales revenue times the percentage rate. That means we take the 1,089,800 times 2.9% to arrive at $31,604 dollars and 20 cents in your percentage fee payment processing fee. Similarly, on the other side of the equation, you've got your orders times the transaction rate. So if we take our 4,000 orders, multiply that by the 30 cents, you're going to yield a transaction fee charge of $1,200. So then simply to get your total payment processing fees, you're going to add the two of those together. So you're going to take your 31,604.20, add that to your 1,200, and that's gonna net you out to $32,804.20. So that's in a nutshell, how you calculate your payment processing fees on both sides of the equation. We've got your percentage fee on the one side, looking at gross revenue and your percentage rate. And then on the other side, you got your transaction fee, which is your orders times your transaction rate. So now let's take a look at a scenario where it's possible that maybe that percentage fee isn't 2.9. Maybe it's, there's a way to get that a little bit lower and definitely there's opportunities in there. So we're gonna look at a scenario or a couple of scenario examples here of how you may be able to whittle down on that percentage rate for your payment processing. So let's take a look at a few examples. We're gonna look at sort of your common payment types. You know, you got Visa, MasterCard and PayPal. Um, you may also be offering American Express or international cards like Discover Card or others like that. Um, so we'll kind of showcase what the sort of typical rates look like there. Um, what we're going to look at is sort of a, what I would say a typical breakdown, <coughs> apologies, of, you know, most people or most merchants or advertisers or brands are seeing about 80% of their volume typically coming through Visa, MasterCard or PayPal. 
And then the balance of that would be coming through maybe American Express or other international cards, if you do so offer those. So in that scenario then, let's take a look at what a sort of basic plan would be, or you know, Shopify offers three rates and I'm gonna use their pricing example here as a, as a way to take a look at this. So we've got our basic Shopify rates or the basic 2.9%. Plus the 30 cents. So on 80% of your volume, again, we're using 4,000 orders and the, the million 89, 800, you're looking at about $26,243 in payment processing charges. Then if we look at the Amex portion of that at 20%, the Amex trade is actually a little bit higher. So it's something to keep in mind if you do thinking about offering Am American Express or uh, Discover cards or things like that. They typically all come with a little bit higher of a charge on the transaction or the percentage rate side of the equation. But in this scenario, let's say we use 20% of it from coming from American Express. You're going to see 3.5% and 30 cents is going to calculate out to be 6,651. So a little bit higher than the previous example we looked at. But overall, you're looking at 32,804. So now let's see, take for example, you know, and again, I'm modeling this after some of the basic rates that Shopify offers through their payment gateway. But if let's say, for example, you're able to shave off a few basis points off of this 2.9. So let's say, for example, you were able to get it down to 2.7. What that's gonna net you is the same 30 cent rate on the transaction rate. You're gonna end up getting, you can see here a difference of about almost $2,000 cheaper on your transaction fees for your domestic cards. And then similarly, if you can shave off another, you know, 10 basis points from 3.5 to 3.4 on the American Express side of the equation, that's going to yield you about another $500 in savings here. So overall, you're looking about a 7% decrease or just, just a shy of uh, just over $2,000 in savings just by simply changing these rates from 2.7 to 3.4. So one more step further, if we go to the advanced plan that Shopify offers, you can also get it down to 2.4%. And uh, you, know, you can see now the savings are really starting to add up. You're down to almost $5,000 savings here on the domestic card rate. And then similarly on getting down to 3.3% on your American Express, um, you're gonna net yourself about another $1,200 in your pocket. So overall, you're looking at the difference of about $5,500 between you know, the basic plan and $27,000 here on the more advanced plan, just by simply choosing to get better preferred rates. Now, again, I'm using examples here from Shopify. Again, I'm a big fan of Shopify and this isn't a sales pitch or spiel for Shopify, but um, it's just a common example that a lot of the merchants that I work with are using Shopify for their payment processing as well as their shopping cart. And so um, this just helps you illustrate the differences that you would be saving on an annual basis. You could be using something like a Braintree or PayPal itself directly. Uh, maybe you're processing through uh, the provider that houses your shopping cart. Whatever that case might be, this is just meant to illustrate and showcase the fact that a few basis points on the sort of top line rate, so 2.9 that everyone talks about, can really save and start adding up to be more money in your pocket that then you can reinvest into other things, whether that's advertising or whether that's more packaging or better packaging, or as we talked about yesterday, we'll start showcasing how we compound shipping rates savings and then compounding some of the processing fee savings. And then as we get into tomorrow and a few of the other days, we'll look at returns and discounts. So that in a nutshell kind of takes us to the end of our lesson today. Really I wanted to showcase how uh, payment processing works showcase how to calculate it, and then showcase what the different components and charges that make up the payment processing, as well as showcase how shaving off a few basis points can add up to be some more savings in your pocket at the overall end of the day for your order margin. So tomorrow we're gonna to get into returns and exchanges. And we're gonna talk a little bit about what are some of the common, I guess if you wanna call it pitfalls, that uh, some retailers and merchants face when they're talking about returns. Um, we'll talk a bit about maybe some strategies around how to combat returns or improve your return rate so that you can get more margin back in your order, overall order margin tree. So with that, I leave you today with again, you know, thank you for being here. I really appreciate your time. And again, hopefully it's sunny where you're at and where you're sitting today. Again, thank you for being here. And I ask you to be present, connect with others and make an impact in someone's life today. Thanks and have a great day. So now I'll pause the recording and see if there's any questions.